In today's video, we're going to be taking a big look at the upcoming winter of 2024 to 2025. We're going to be somewhere between a colder neutral Enso, which is neither a La Nina or El Nino, it's kind of in between, or a La Nina. We're going to be comparing what that kind of difference would mean. We're taking a look at the history of both of those and what that will likely mean here, especially in the central states where both would spell usually cooler temperatures than normal, but even extending eastward, taking a little bit of a look at the precipitation, which is very similar between the two of them, and we're still going to be taking a look at a little bit of model guidance, updated model guidance for the upcoming winter, so there's a whole lot to break down today for you cold and snow lovers. Let's just dive into things, taking a look here at the monthly temperature analogs, and this model here, the CFS model, does have a warmer November, unless you're in the mid-Atlantic or northeast, where there is some cooler temperatures around warmer across the central states but really what i want to talk about here is december which looks very similar uh, december showing cooler temperatures here which is highly believable at least for those areas because of how you know august september october has gone where we've seen cold want to linger around these areas the kind of northern southeast through the mid-atlantic and even into the northeast uh, could be colder than this for other areas, but at least in that northeast corridor, I do find this to be highly believable. But watch what happens when we extend this into January. It's going to be really, really huge here. But look at this. A huge turn of events. Massive amounts of cold air pouring into the central and the eastern states here. Clearly in the form of multiple Arctic blasts, as you can see, with this cold kind of just lingering near the coast still as well. Very interesting, very intriguing, and along the lines of what we're going to see, what history would tell us. History would support this as far as the type of ENSO pattern that we're moving into. It definitely seems to be plausible. So this is a very cool look, of course. Let's take a look at the precipitation month by month and... October, they're calling for the rest of October to look rather dry along the east. Very believable. Uh, November, same thing, unfortunately. We do see quite a bit of precipitation out west and the south central states seeing some activity in the month of November. But what I really want to talk about today is this December time frame where we start to get some storms moving through the southeast corridor, which could be interesting. Looks a little bit like some nor'easter activity, maybe some southern sliders in there could be on the cards. We're also seeing a lot of southwest activity, which is highly unusual for an, uh, La Nina, by the way. Typically, uh, you would see a lot more of a kind of northern flow like this, so that would be the normal storm track to see. Sometimes this would extend further southward and become nor'easters. It's a little more rare. Uh, but this looks like we're full-blown seeing more of an El Nino look as far as precipitation is concerned. So take that with a grain of salt. That looks highly unusual. Uh, as we move towards January, it's a lot of the same. Very El Nino looking here from this CFS model. Dry in the Pacific Northwest in a fringe, at least, La Nina event. So we're seeing this basically get shut down. And then we see the Southwest, it's game on. And we see a lot of the Southeast slider or even... Uh, nor'easter activity in some cases and it looks like a lot of these want to kind of cut through the plains as well so we're seeing some of that action but look at the southern jet stream in play here by the cfs model i'm going to remember this and if this ends up happening it's going to be huge kudos uh, to the cfs model of course because that's a very bold prediction for anything to really be calling for during again at least a fringe la nina event we're at least going to be on the cooler side of a neutral enso which would still uh, inherit a lot of those La Nina type characteristics characteristics at the very least. Uh, let's take a look at the entire winter here, or November through January, sorry. We don't have February available to us yet on this model, but as far as November, December, January is concerned, we do see cooler temperatures overall kind of encompassing a lot of these areas in the plains, Midwest, down through the southeast, Ohio Valley as well, into the mid-Atlantic and northeast, we're seeing a lot of that, and then uh, obviously a bit of a ridge here out west. So that is the current look from this CFS model. As far as precipitation is concerned, again, a lot of southern action here, which is the opposite of what we've really been seeing, and then very dry here across the northwest, even the north central, and even the northeast Ohio Valley, uh, mid-Atlantic as well. Very odd. We're going to see that there's a little bit of a different look once we look at the history. So the temperatures look very plausible according to what history would tell us. The precipitation looks off. It looks a little weird uh, and a lot more what you would expect to see in an El Nino event, which we obviously are not anticipating. And, you know, 
I rarely say this, but an El Nino is almost impossible for the upcoming winter, obviously. We're expected to be much closer to a La Nina, maybe even a full-blown La Nina. So very, very far from what's expected uh, at this point. Of course, anything's possible. I got to add that in because I always say that, but it is true. Uh, as we take a look here, this is the December time frame on our neutral ENSO year. So this is all of the negative neutral years, which is what we're expecting to be possible. So uh, this is the December of 2012, 2013, 1971, 1974, etc. You can read them all at the bottom, but there's many years that we have at, at play here. And obviously, the more we add in, the more... Uh, averaged out it's going to be but also the more likely to be accurate it's going to be when we have that larger sample size and for december this is actually the coldest month in both colder neutral enso years and la nina years december tends to be the coldest month so a little bit of front loaded winners that doesn't mean that has to be what happens this upcoming winter but it is interesting to note that that happened frequently across a lot of these years this looks a lot like the january forecast that we just saw from the cfs model where we have this really, really intense Arctic uh, kind of motion happening here from Canada into a lot of the Midwest, Northern Plains, Ohio Valley. And there is some lingering cold to go around for the East and for the South Central states as well, just not quite as intense. For reference, I'm going to reference this in the beginning so that I don't have to do it later, but a lot of the past four or five winters, as long as I've been doing YouTube, uh, this area here overall, not everywhere literally, but pretty much, has been in either the yellow or the red, not just for monthly anomalies, but for the whole December through February anomalies. So if you're anything below yellow or red here, you're basically seeing a cooler winter than the previous four or five winters. So even if you're in like the greens or just the white, so the greens or the white, so if you're talking like these areas here, that's still much more promising than anything we've seen in recent years. I just want to add that disclaimer. Obviously, I know a lot of you probably want to be in the blue or the purple, but you don't even have to see that to have a much more decent winter than what we've been seeing. Now, let's break it down month by month. Here is December, or better yet, January, because that was December. So here's January. We see a little bit of a thaw, especially across the southeast in these neutral winters. Also, the plains kind of warming up a little bit. And we saw mostly cooler in the west and then also a bit for the upper Midwest here but a little bit of a sloppier look for January overall. And then here is February, where we get back to a lot of this Arctic flow happening for the Midwest, Northern Plains, and also the Northwest, with a really intense southeast ridge so we see more of this kind of a flow here in the February of those years and I know a lot of you are not hoping for this but again for the entire December January February time frame we saw mostly reds or you know deeper oranges or at least yellows over the last few winters so if you're in the greens or these very light yellows this is still a cooler winter uh, than any of them that we've seen recently here's the entire December through February put together for all of those years and what we see is a slight southeast ridge trending in for these uh, colder neutral and so years. Much cooler from the Pacific Northwest through into a lot of obviously Western and Central Canada. Uh, but not only that, this does stretch down into the Midwest and Plains. And we do see the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast also in the blues here. Uh, again, it's a lot cooler than what we've been seeing. And even these areas, this would be a lot cooler than what we've seen in recent years. Precipitation in these neutral and so but you know cooler neutral and so years looks pretty much like this wetter in the northwest wetter across the great lakes in northeast here indicating more of a flow uh through this northern stream as far as storms are concerned with basically the southwest south central and southeast being kind of shut down with a lot less frequent storms moving through again a very very different look than what we saw in that cfs model so that's why i'm so shocked to see that from that CFS model. This is classic La Nina, or at least colder neutral Enso look here. Notice there's a lot of neutral areas in here because we do tend to get a little bit more nor'easter activity than you would see in La Nina's uh, in these more neutral winters. They're a little bit warmer in that Enso region and that causes more storms through the Southeast corridor and up the East Coast. As we break down the La Nina's, here's December again, really, really a strong look for a lot of the Midwest, in extending much further eastward in this La Nina case, we see the Mid-Atlantic through the Northeast very cool in these years, which you can see at the bottom. 
Uh, that's obviously the beginning month of those winners. It's gonna it's gonna change here when we look at January, but let's go ahead and do that. And we see January looks a lot cooler than those neutral and so years. The only thing that is a little bit concerning here is the West and East are kind of equally cold and we're seeing cold across the board. Very, very rare, especially in kind of like the modern pattern we've been in, uh, to see coast to coast cooler air across the winter like this. So I would take this with a grain of salt. It'd probably be one or the other. Obviously, this model has some more deep blues in the east, I'd say, than the west, so it's probably leaning that way, but there's obviously some discrepancies between these years where there's some differences. Notice we have a little bit of a smaller sample size. In this case, this isn't including moderate or strong La Ninas. We're expecting a weak La Nina, if anything, so we kind of uh, have a smaller sample size in this case, and that does lead to some of these dis discrepancies to kind of pop up a little bit more uh, on these individual years. Here's February, and similarly to... Uh, that uh, neutral Enso analogs we looked at earlier, we see cooler in the central states, a little unlike it though, we do see cooler across the southwest as well, kind of just the west in general. It looks like we definitely get a negative PNA pattern here for February on these La Nina years where we have the southeast ridge really rampant and then cooler air sinking down the west for those Februarys. But overall, when we look at all together, this is the look, December through February, it still ends up being a brutally cold winter on average here across a lot of the central and eastern states here, especially if you're in the Midwest or Plains where the uh, polar vortex looks to be very active in a lot of those years. Still cooler in the southwest, but a lot less than what we see across those eastern counterparts. As far as precipitation is concerned, we do see very similar uh, things, like I mentioned earlier. We see this northern jet stream being a lot more active. It looks like a lot of this makes it to the east coast, though, so that's a little bit different. We have a little bit more troughing in the east, so this makes sense that the jet stream would be off the east coast here. But still, we see this kind of shutdown of the southwest, south central, and even a lot of the southeast precipitation here uh, compared to an El Nino. And the north is really where those storms prevail, which is very common in a La Nina and what you would expect to see. I wanted to add these as well on the temperatures. This is the December through February for the winners of uh, 2013 to 2014 and 2014 to 2015. These were two of our more recent neutral ENSO winners uh, that are probably going to be front runner analogs for me. Some of the front runner analogs, these, you might remember these as some of the more decent winners we've had at least in the past 10 to 15 years. So uh, definitely some good memories for a lot of us. These were active, snowy, and very cold winners. We had uh, an active polar vortex as well in especially the 2013 to 2014 winter. So this is how those ones looked. And again, uh, white on the Eastern, Eastern seaboard. I remember this being a very cold and snowy couple of winters for Virginia, and they're not even in the blue at all. So this goes as a good example that you don't really need the deep blues or even the pinks to see a good winter. You really just need to not see the yellows, oranges, and reds. Uh, if you're anywhere near normal or slightly below normal, you're going to be in really, really good shape uh, for a winter that likely will be a lot less disappointing for you cold and snow lovers than the last, like I said, four or five. So just a lot of insight. Uh, we're going to have more information, obviously, as we move into November. We're getting awfully close to the winter, so our final thoughts are kind of coming together here. I want to see how these models update, you know, once we're moving into November and they have a much better idea and also updates in the end. So, so there will be a few more updates, probably even another winter forecast video coming soon. Uh, with that all being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.